Hello, students at Bog School, Clippert Academy, and students all around the world. Welcome to another educational video from Shakespeare in Detroit. Today, you'll learn how to make a color wheel, the basics of color theory. This lesson is brought to you by Deloitte, proud sponsor of Shakespeare in Detroit's Shakespeare Steam. Hi, I'm Cal Schwartz, production manager for Shakespeare in Detroit. And today, we're going to be discussing color theory and making our very own color wheel. Today's lesson follows the science and art pillars of the Shakespeare Steam program. Come along, let's get started. So here's everything that you'll need. Now, if you're one of our partner schools at Boggs or Clippert, you got an awesome bag full of all of these things. But if you don't have these things, they're easily able to be found at any craft store, or better yet, contact Shakespeare in Detroit and maybe we can become a partner school with your school. So here's what you'll need. First, inside the bags, or if you're gonna purchase them yourself, you'll find these little cups. One of them is gonna be used for water to help wash our brush off. The other we're gonna to use to mix our paint colors because we're only using the three primary colors today. Then you'll find some popsicle sticks. These are used for scooping paint and for mixing them in your other cups. You'll find a pencil and a mechanical pencil, but I have a pen. Inside your bags, you'll also find a nice little paintbrush and three cups of paint, red, yellow, and blue. You'll also find, inside the folders in the big bags, a heavy piece of white paper. And you may be wondering what that single piece of paper is for. Well, it's for this project. Then, you will also need some paper towel, which everybody has at home. All right, let's get started. All right, so first, we need to make a circle. I'm gonna use this jug of paint, but you can use anything at home, a plate, a CD, a bowl turned upside down just to give you an idea of how to get a circle. And look how nice that looks. Now, we want to find center in our circle. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just gonna give you an idea of where your lines are gonna go through and just to help keep things even. So then you're gonna make three lines. I'm gonna cheat and use this ruler so that I get it nice and neat but you can use any sort of straight edge that you have at home or maybe even your popsicle sticks that came with you. So I'm gonna do one of these down, up and down, and then we need two diagonals after that. One that goes this way and one that goes this way. So I will make this line. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And then I will make the next line. And let's do it like that. All right, and when you're done, it should look like a nice big pizza pie. Now we're ready to start adding colors. So when we're talking about the science of color and color mixing and color theory, there's awesome things involved about science, like chemistry, and art as well. But from these three primary colors, you can make any color of the rainbow. So the first thing that we're gonna do is take our brush and take our cups of paint and in our sections, we're gonna paint red, yellow, and blue. And you have to make sure that you skip a section every time because in between will go our secondary colors. So let's get started with red, shall we? So we take our cup and we open it and we take the lid off and we get just a little bit of paint on our brush. Now remember, don't just dunk your paintbrush all the way in. You don't need to get too much paint on there. This part of the brush right here, the metal part, is called the ferrule. You don't want to get paint on that. You want to try to keep paint just on your bristles. And I'm going to do my edges first. Trying to be nice and neat because we always try to be neat and do our best with everything we do. And then we fill in the spot with a pretty red. And I'm going to turn it. <laughs> Mm 
And then we fill in the center. And if you have excess paint on your brush, that's okay. We're gonna wipe the edge off on there. And then we're gonna help fill in that a little bit. Get rid of the excess. Beautiful. So now, one of those extra cups that you had over here, I filled it with a little bit of water. So that's gonna help me clean my brush. So we'll move our popsicle sticks out of the way and our other paint and take some paper towel like we had mentioned before. Keep that next to you because that'll help you clean your brush off. And then we just swish our brush around in the cup like that and get the excess paint off. And do this two or three times. It'll still stain the bristles, but most of the paint will be off and you won't have to worry about it blending into the other colors because that's the next step. So let's do one more. Do, 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 do. And you can kind of see the color gets lighter and lighter. That tells me that the paint is coming out. So I don't have to worry too much, but I want to be sure. So now our next color is yellow. So remember, let's get our red out of the way. Remember to skip a square, so, or skip a triangle rather. So we're going to open our yellow, load our brush up with our yellow paint, and we're gonna get that in there. And we start with our edges first. Pick up some of that because we had too much paint and we get our outline. Beautiful. And let's smooth this out because we have some gaps in there. There we go. Let's get all our brush strokes going the same way. Some artists are very particular about their brush strokes. Some only paint up and down, some only paint sideways. All right. And there we have our yellow. So now we can put that aside, and we will do the same thing. We will clean off our brush, get that paint out of there. There we go. Make sure we have our excess off. And now it is time for blue. So we open that. Look at how pretty that blue is. Remember, skip a square or skip, <laughs> skip a triangle. Mr. Cal struggles with the shapes. All right. And we get the blue. And we start with our edges. Get it nice in the corner. Let's turn our paper so it's easier. I think we need, oh, no, there's some paint left on that brush. Now, if you're at home and didn't get a kit from Shakespeare in Detroit, you can also do this with crayon. You'll just have to layer the crayon colors when you go to make the other colors and go very lightly and add lots and lots of layers. With paint, we can create the color that we need, but if you have crayons at home, you put one color, then another color, and I'll show you, and we'll talk more about that when we get into our secondary colors. So don't worry. If you don't have paint, that's perfectly all right. All right, so now let's clean off our paintbrush, and then we'll get started with secondary colors. So now that we have our primary colors laid out, and those are gonna get a chance to dry, we can talk a little bit about our color mixing. So from these three primary colors, we can make any other color we want. So the first two that we're gonna mix is red and blue. And that is gonna give us, does anybody know? Purple, red and blue gives us purple. So with our extra cups that we got and our popsicle sticks, we are going to take a little bit of blue and put it in that extra cup, wipe the edge off. And now, here's the tricky part, because we don't want to use all our popsicle sticks at once. So, we're going to take our paper towel 
and wipe the excess off that stick, just so we're not making a mess. And then we're gonna take the other side of the stick and we're gonna scoop some red out and mix that in our cup. And then I'm gonna take the edge of this paper towel here and wrap it around the stick so I don't get paint like I did here all over myself and mix these colors up. And then we're gonna see what kind of color we come up with. It should be purple. And sometimes if you mix too much paint of one color in with another color, it can become kind of muddy. So if you have to, take on a little corner piece of your paper and test to see what the color looks like, or even on the back of the paper. And that'll help show us what we need. And see, look, we have a beautiful purple color. So now we can put this over like this. And the purple's pretty dark, so you don't need a whole bunch. And then we can spread it out. And now with this, I don't need much more paint because the pigment is so strong. So I'm gonna mix just a little bit of my water in here. And this is gonna help me pull that paint and act as a vehicle for me to move that paint around a little bit more. So we can take a little bit and go a long way. And it will also help thin it out quite a bit so that you can see that purple. Now I made my purple a little dark, but you can see here that it looks real purple with that white coming through. So I'm gonna use my water and just help move that purple around. And it'll dry a little bit lighter. This is more of a plum color. So there we go. Now, we clean our brush off. And we take our popsicle stick and we wipe it clean and we place it to the side. And it may be a good idea to put something down over your table at home so that way you're not making a mess. These are our fun art tables so we can kind of treat them how we need to. So now we're gonna mix our next color. So we have red and yellow. Does anybody know what red and yellow make? Orange. So we take another popsicle stick and we are going to mix in this new cup a little bit of yellow. Now. Yellow is the lighter color and red happens to have more pigment, so you're going to need less red than you will yellow. So I'm going to scoop this out here, wipe my popsicle stick off of the excess, and I'm actually going to use the same side because we're done with this for now. So we'll take a little bit of red, and let's mix it over onto the side here, and then you can slowly start mixing them together. And see how that'll start to change. And we'll get orange. Neat. All right. I think I'm going to add just a little more yellow. There you go, that's looking pretty good. Now, in between our red and our yellow, we are going to put our orange down. Yes, orange. You never know exactly what it's gonna look like until you put it right on the paper. So that's why sometimes if you're unsure of the color, it's a good idea to test it on the back of the sheet or on a separate sheet of paper, just so you know exactly what you're gonna get. 
because you don't want to put it on the piece of paper without being the right color. So it's always good to make sure. But this orange looked so nice in the cup, I knew it was going to be right. All right. And it's okay if you go out of the lines. We're having fun. And we will fill in. How neat. All right. So now we clean off our brush and we get ready for our next color. Do -do 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 so, we put that cup aside, we take a new cup, and we are going to mix yellow and blue. Does anybody know what yellow and blue make? They make green, like the ocean. So, we take our last popsicle stick, and we are going to mix yellow and blue. Now remember, blue is a strong color, so we don't want to use a lot of blue, so we're going to start with more yellow. And I kind of got a little bit of orange in there from the last time, but that's okay. It's just a smidge. It shouldn't hurt it too much. And I'm going to wipe off my popsicle stick. And then, oh, there's my blue. I'm going to get a little bit of blue. And start with a little and add more. You can always add more, but you can't take away. Look at that. Well, that's a pretty green if I've ever seen one. Okay, now, I'm pretty happy with that green, so we're gonna rock and roll. We're on to our last triangle. We're gonna fill it in. Here we go. Get that paintbrush loaded up nicely with that paint, and let's see. Oh, look at that green. That is beautiful. Very good. Now, just like with our green, when you go to make your purple, make sure you use little paint by little paint. Don't just dump a bunch in, because sometimes if you put too much in, it'll end up dark. So it's always better to start with a little bit and add more and work that way. And always test your colors if you're not sure. But that purple, it is dark, but it's still pretty good. And there you have it. That's our color wheel. So these colors are our secondary colors, purple, orange, and green. Those come from our primary colors, which are red, yellow, and blue. Now there are things called tertiary colors, which are even more vast, that are the third level of colors, but we're not gonna talk about those today, but you can find those online if you're looking for more information on those. So that is how you create a color wheel. Congratulations! You just completed the Color Wheel Project with Shakespeare and Detroit Steam Project. Don't forget to like and subscribe our YouTube channel, but make sure you sign up for our newsletter at shakespeareanddetroit.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Shakespeare in Detroit, and on Twitter at Shakes in the Dean.